Welcome to Tea, Toast, and Theology. So we have this Old Testament reading with Moses, and Moses is being taken to the uh, mountaintop, shown what the promise was going to be, and the promise does come to light at the end. But he's shown that, and then he's told, right? And that's the end. And then Joshua takes over, right? Now, we could have fun by saying, well, this is at the end of uh, this book, and uh, if it talks about Moses' death, then how is it that we attribute these books to Moses? Dead man writing. All right. That's not the point here today. The point is, he goes up, looks at what the promise is, is not able to make it. Right? And then we have this interaction between Jesus and Pharisees and Sadducees have just had an interaction. Right? So these are religious people. These are people who have spent a lot of time in the uh, religious code, what they call the law. And these are the people who are arguing with Jesus. And the story ends that Basically, they are, he's too much of a smart aleck for us, right? They try to trap him. They have been doing it over and over and over again. They just don't get it, right? And obviously, Jesus is not winning any friends here, if you haven't noticed, right? And then you have the reading from, Thessalonians, where Paul is saying, look, look, you know, all those things that the world wants us to have, like, you know, be nice to each other and flattery and all that kind of stuff, that we don't have. We don't. But what is it that we do have? We have gospel. And we can tell you that we may not flatter you and may not say nice things to you and, you know, follow the rule that we all want to follow these days, be nice, right? We may not be all of that, but we want you to know that we love you deeply. Right? So, what is at the core of these stories? What is at the core of these stories? So let me begin by asking this question. What is the promise that was given to the people of God? So they will inherit all this land. Awesome. Any other ideas? They'll be free from where they were, okay? Egypt, yeah. Any other ideas? Their descendants will be as multiple as the stars. Their descendants will be multiple and numerous as stars. All right. Fast forward 4,000 years. How's that promise going? Huh? Not very well. How was that promise going in the time of Jesus 2,000 years ago? Not very well. So what was Jesus trying to tell these people? Because that's exactly what they were hearing. That's what they were writing. 
That's what they were saying to people, that our promise that God has given to us is this piece of land, is freedom from slavery, right? And, and that we will just prosper. You know, there will be a uh, quiver full of children, <laughs> as the psalmist would put it, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, th that's what the promise they heard. And Jesus comes on the scene and says, wait a minute. Did you actually hear the promise? Because obviously you heard those words, but you did not hear why the promise. You did not hear why you should be set free. Why you should have a space in which you can experience God's goodness of milk and honey. You did not hear why God wants to liberate you. You did not hear why God wants to make this covenant with you. You did not hear why God wants to prosper you and multiply you. That is the part that you have missed. And what is that part? That part, my friends, is that God created this world in which God's vision was that of the Garden of Eden, in which God would walk with people and all creatures great and small. That is why we, by the way, ask people to bring their animals into the church and we bless them. Not because, I don't know, we are all dog and cat lovers. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, We do that because of that Garden of Eden. Because we believe that all of God's creatures, part of the plan was to be all living together. Isaiah says it beautifully that the lion cub and the little, you know, lamb and, you know, everything will live peacefully together. All creatures, great and small, will all be together living in peace and harmony. That is the vision. And when one people are being oppressed like they were, that vision is not being lived out. So it was the hope, <coughs> excuse me, that people who have experienced injustice would probably have a desire to have justice for everyone. And so maybe if you liberate them, they'll go and create a society where there will be a recognition that we all have to move towards that promise, that intention of returning to that beautiful Garden of Eden space, where we actually understand and make every effort to understand each other. I love following that dog bunny. Because, I don't know if you've ever heard of that dog, Bunny, or not. This morning I sent out an email. There's a little clip of that dog. So it's a dog in uh, Seattle. And her mama started putting little buttons. And it each has a little word on it. And the dog basically now talks to this human by pressing these buttons. Okay? And over a period of time, she kept adding buttons, you know, and, uh, and now I think there are over 90 or so words that the dog uses to construct thoughts and to, to talk to the owner. 
And uh, there was this one really cute one where uh, this dog goes out, looks at the rain, and says, water, bye-bye. <laughs> it's like rain, rain, go away, come again, the other, right? It's like water, bye-bye. <laughs> I'm done with this rain, <laughs> right? And, and then she's commenting on the uh, outside when it's dark, and she says, outside night. Meaning it's getting dark outside because of the clouds. And so the dog mind is thinking. Right? Now, if we live with the dog and think that the dog only exists for barking or, you know, sitting in our lap or whatever, that's a very limited understanding of God's creation. You see what, what I'm saying? That it's not only human beings. Every creature that God has created is much more, and there is more value to it than we can ever imagine. And in a world which believes in God, we try to understand that. And that wanting to understand and communicate comes from a place of deep love, not that of trying to gain the approval. Because that's what flattery does. Right? Now, some days I have to say flattery works on Ellie. But, <laughs> but, but really, it comes from a deep place of love. So what was it that Jesus was saying? Jesus is saying, you hear all these promises... And then you spend your entire life, and not only entire life, but generations, thousands of years, trying to have that dream. And you completely miss the point, because the point was to be able to create the kingdom of God. Which begins by deep love for each other. And therefore, Jesus says, love your God. Because if you don't love your God, you will never understand how important it is to actually try and recreate God's vision of the kingdom. That's why you have to love God. Loving God doesn't mean coming to church, you know, and doing all the religious and ritualistic things. That's not what loving God means. Loving God means that you so deeply love God that you actually want what God wants for the world. Right? And if you are actually wanting that, then what happens? Loving everyone just flows from that. Not flattery, not trying to gain popularity, because none of the disciples and Jesus was successful in gaining popularity and, and uh, gaining friends, right? That's not the point. The point is that you love so deeply that you want to recreate that world. So love for neighbor flows from the love for God. You love God deeply, you start loving people. Deeply, just like Paul is saying in Thessalonians, that our commitment is that is to that gospel. So how does that apply? Now, Jesus is trying to say that to them and is constantly arguing that your rituals, your buildings, your institutions, your law, your this, that, or the hierarchies that you have created, none of this is going to help you create the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus is doing. That's what Jesus' ministry is all about. That none of these things are actually going to get you to that point. And they keep on insisting that, no, who is this man? We have followed Mo Moses for over 2,000 years now. And this man shows up, and he is the smart aleck, and he tries to tell everyone that we all got it wrong. What kind of a man is he? Let's get rid of him. Right? 
And that's what Jesus is saying. Look, all these things, you are missing the basic point. Why the promise? You hear the promise, but why the promise? Because if you focus on why the promise, you will be able to actually have the promise. And so, my friends, question is for us today. Are we focusing on listening to the promise or are we focusing on listening to why the promise? I think there are so many people in this world who are craving for something different. How do I know that? Because new chapters open new doors for people to encounter each other. I know this one thing. I know you probably think I promote it a little too much. But I do so because I find in it the purpose for which God calls us. Every time we have this worship and praise, there are some new people that show up. It was true for this week too. You were there. Right? Every time. You can tell me how many times has it happened at this service. And I'm not trying to be, you know. Every time. Okay? So if we are listening to God then what should we be doing if we are listening to God? Right? Okay, now here's the interesting thing. I said at that service that starting in November, which is next week, every Saturday we are going to have our worship and praise. Every Saturday. And Craig said, I hate you. <laughs> because it's hard to get all the band together and I said listen if it is God's will God will provide now I don't know what the future holds but I do know one thing that before that evening ended there were three people all three were musicians and one of them in the industry who has, like, recorded music for some really big names. And he sings. There's another guy who has a degree in audio, like, you know, processing and all. And he plays guitar and another guy. And all three of them, all right, we'll come Tuesday for rehearsal and then Saturday we'll play. I don't know if it will happen or not. I'm praying it will. But here's the thing. When we listen to why that promise, God makes provisions for things to happen. We just have to listen to where God is leading us and not insist or like the Pharisees and the Sadducees on maintaining the status quo. My friends, it is a deep heart I say this. There's a war going on. And behind that is that promise. How many lives are going to be lost? Blood shed, families destroyed. Because we are having a hard time loving our God. Loving God's vision for the world. And we are insisting that the way we have done things, the way we have understood our promise is the right way. I think the people of faith need to stop and ask ourselves, 
is god showing us areas of hope if so then what is keeping us from joining him our understanding and our hearing of the promise because if that's the case my friends we will all end up on the mountain told what the promise is and told i pray today that we will choose to be joshua joshua actually means yeshua which means jesus Thank you.